Greetings students, this is Dr. Schaefer, uh, and uh, this is a welcome video to welcome you to the class. This is the Summer 2 2024 version of Philosophy 1040, which is the Happiness in the Meaning of Life course. I uh, want to welcome you all to the, to the course and w wish you a successful semester. Um, what I'd like to do in this video is, I'm not going to say a lot about the class itself, like content of the class, but more, uh, I want to say a little bit about myself, a little introduction, and then talk about uh, navigating Brightspace, since this is an online asynchronous course. And then I also want to talk a little bit about uh, the course itself and how to succeed in the course, how the grade is determined, that, that sort of thing. So let me start with introductions. Uh, uh, I'm Dr. Schaefer, I'll say that again, and uh, this is, I'm coming up on my 25th year at Xavier, uh, which is really hard to believe. Uh, Xavier was my first real uh, gig coming out of graduate school uh, from Chicago. I, I was at DePaul University, and uh, I fell in love with Xavier uh, and the students uh, right away, and I, I really have not found any good reason to leave since then. Uh, I uh, am married and have uh, two kids and a dog. We, uh, I'm actually, the, the room that I'm filming this in is a uh, kind of my temporary office. We're, we're doing a, a home renovation, which should be done uh, sometime in the next month or so. So hopefully uh, that may be a little disruptive for the course, but we'll be moving from uh, this place, which is actually right next door to our house, which is being renovated to next door. Um, and we live in the, the historic 7th Ward, which is pretty close to Esplanade Avenue, um, close to the Treme neighborhood. Uh, and we, we've been in this neighborhood for uh, almost 20 years now, so it's been a while. Uh, I've got, my kids are twins. They're eight years old. Uh, they will be with me at home, which might be a challenge for the first week or so of the course. And then they'll be in, in various camps for the rest of the, of, of the time. And uh, my wife, uh, my dog, my th three-year-old German Shepherd is actually sleeping at my feet right now. I'll give you a, a quick look at her. This is, I don't know if you can see that. She, she's, she likes to be clo close to me and that's usually where she is when I'm working. Um, so, uh, hey, enough, enough about me. Let me let's, let's talk about how to navigate the course on Brightspace. So uh, if you're viewing this video, <coughs> it means that you've been to Brightspace, to the, uh, the Brightspace page for the course, which is good. Um, and I've embedded this video in a couple of different places on Brightspace, but, but I wanna mention two things which are really important initially uh, for how the course is set up on Brightspace and how to navigate on Brightspace. Uh, so point number one is that if you go to the content tab, uh, which is one of the tabs across the top of the screen on Brightspace. Uh, and if you click on that content tab, I'm going to do it, do it right now, uh, then you'll see a menu on the left-hand side that has uh, a number of different tabs on the menu. So one of those is called Overview. It should be at the very top of that menu on the left-hand side. If you click on the Overview link, you will get a nice overview of the course as a whole. So I, I recommend that that's where you start. Um, after that, what you should do is click on the Start Here button, which is also on that menu on the left-hand side. And the Start Here, uh, when, when you click on there, you'll, you'll be taken to, taken to another page that, that includes uh, different links that uh, explain how the course operates, okay? So if you do those two things, um, you know, <clears throat> and, and make sure that you, that you read all the important information, so take 10 minutes or so, however long it, it, it takes to do that, to make sure that you're getting all the info that you need about the course, and also you'll be learning how the course is set up on Brightspace, okay? Um, the other thing I want to say about navigating the course on Brightspace is that you'll see that basically the way that I've set the course up is in weeks. So on that same left-hand menu in the content area of Brightspace, uh, you'll see something that says week one, uh, June 24th, <coughs> excuse me, to June 26th. 
and when you, when you click on that link, you'll, you'll get a bunch of information about everything that we're going to do on week one. I've actually set up week two, week three, week four, and week five on Brightspace already, or at least partially set up, but I, I have those set so that you can't see it. Um, and what, what I'll do is that when we get further along in the course, I'll open those up and, and make those available so that when we get to the end of week one, um, I'll set up week two and make that visible so that you can see what you're looking at for week two, okay? Um, if you have any questions about navigating the course on Brightspace, you know, this is really important since this is a completely online and asynchronous course and we won't actually be physically together at any point during the semester um, unless you come to, to my office hours uh, you know and then and then we can have a zoom meeting uh, uh, so if you have any questions send me an email um, email is, is going to be the best way to contact me and I and I do try to respond as quickly as possible to emails maybe not over the weekend but definitely during the week okay uh, so let me move on to talk about the course itself. And I've got four things that I want to say here. Um, and this, this is not going to get into the, the content of the course, but more uh, how to succeed in this online course. Um, and the first thing that I want to emphasize is the uh, importance of your keeping up with the workload for the course and being aware of deadlines so that you can keep up with the work. Um, so I've tried to be as clear as possible in the way the course is set up on Brightspace about assignments and deadlines for assignments. Um, but of course, it's gonna be up to you to check the week one tab and to look through and to see everything that you should be doing for Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday um, so that you can keep up the, the, the first week of the course is very busy because we'll be doing introductions, we'll be doing a philosophy of life um, segment of the course that involves a survey and um, some other things, and then we'll also be starting the first book of the course. So I would say that, that in a way, the, the first week of the course is the busiest because they're you know, because we're getting started, we're getting introduced to each other, and, and there are a number of assignments. So make sure you're aware of those assignments, what you need to do, and when they are due. Um, so to succeed in the course, you've, you've got to be able to do that, right? You've got to be aware of deadlines. I, I, I have taught uh, um, online courses in the summer, uh, pretty much every summer for, I would say, for at least the last 10 years. And I would say that the number one problem for students um, not succeeding in the course is getting behind, missing deadlines, and missing points because you miss deadlines. Uh, you just can't do that in the summer. Uh, you know, think about it. What we're doing in, in the summer is condensing 15 weeks uh, which is how long a normal semester is in the fall or the spring. We're condensing that down to uh, five weeks. So, uh, you know, it's going to be busy. There is going to be a lot of work that you have to do for the class and you need to be aware of what the assignments are and when they're done, when they're due uh, in order to succeed. I, I don't think that the, the course is especially difficult and the stuff that I'm asking you to do is, and I'll get to more details about that in a second, is, is especially um, difficult, but you got to do it um, in, in, in order to succeed in the class. Okay, so that's point number one is to keep up, be aware of deadlines. Uh, uh, point number two is reading. Uh, you've got to read the reading assignments to succeed in this class, okay? Um, I'm gonna be asking you to read a number of primary source philosophy texts. And by primary source, I mean not a summary of something, you know, like a textbook summary where someone is explaining what um, some existentialist philosopher says about something, uh, which is fine, you know, nothing against that, but I'm going to give you the opportunity to read um, something that an actual existentialist philosopher or stoic philosopher has said about something. Um, and so there's a certain challenge to that, right? And, and the first challenge is that you've got to do the reading in order to be prepared for a quiz, in order to be prepared for discussion board posts and short writing assignments, you, you've got to do the readings. Um, so there really are no, no shortcuts there. If you, if you try to create shortcuts, 
um, in various ways, your, your grade is going to suffer um, for the class. Uh, I, I pretty much can promise you that. Um, okay, so that second point is you've got to do the reading. I mean, there's not that much reading in terms of quantity of pages, but you definitely need to do it. Uh, the third point is value of the discussion board. So one of the things that I'm going to ask you to do on a regular basis for this course is to post um, in a discussion board, and that will all be set up on Brightspace. There will be different um, forums, topics, and threads. That's the lingo that Brightspace uses for how discussion boards are organized. Um, the discussion board takes the place of what we would do in an actual classroom, right? In a, in a physical classroom. So it's really important. It's, it's the one area where you and I are likely to have um, a di di direct uh, interaction with each other because what I'm gonna try to do uh, as much as I can is to respond to discussion board posts that you, the student, have made on the discussion board. Um, and my, my response may be just to say, hey, that's a really insightful point. Um, that's 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 on target, um, or I might post something to say that that uh, what you've said here is incomplete, or maybe you've misunderstood some key idea. So what I would recommend that you do for the discussion board is to not post and leave, uh, you know, to post and then never come back to the discussion board, but rather to post and return and then see whether I have responded to something that you've said on the discussion board or maybe one of your classmates has responded. Um, and that way you can get a better, deeper, more complete understanding of whatever the ideas are that we're talking about. And then finally, and this is really important for the discussion board, these are free points. Okay, I'm gonna say a little bit more about the grade in, in my, my fourth point. Uh, but I can say here that uh, I'm not going to grade the discussion board posts that you make, okay? There, there are certain rules that you have to follow. There needs to be a certain number of sentences that you post, and you've, you've, of course you've got to make the deadline. But otherwise, I'm, I'm not going to be, um, e even if you say something that is incomplete or incorrect, I'm, I'm not going to subtract points from what you say there. Uh, so when you post on the discussion board, uh, you, you, you get all the points. Uh, that are available there, you know, so long as you follow the rules. And th your discussion board grade is 25% of, of the overall grade for the course. So that means that really everyone in this class should be getting a 100% in the discussion board category. And all you've got to do for that is to make sure that you meet the deadlines and that you follow the rules for, for posting. Okay, uh, lastly, the grade. So the grade for this class is a pretty simple formula. There are four pieces to the grade. Each piece is worth 25%. So four quarters equals a dollar, right? Uh, so uh, category number one is the discussion board posting, which I just mentioned. Um, category number two is quizzes. There will be regular reading quizzes for this course. Details about that in the stuff that I've posted on Brightspace. Um, and that will also be 25% of your overall grade. Thirdly is short writing assignments. There will be pretty much for every unit of the course, there will be a short writing assignment. By short, I mean 250 to 450 words, which is really a couple of medium-sized paragraphs. So nothing um, super lengthy for that. That will also be 25% of your grade. And then finally, there will be a critical essay that you'll do at the very end of the semester. More details about that when we get into like week three and, and week four. Um, and your grade on that will, be, will also be worth 25%. So that's it. Um, best wishes for a su successful semester. If you have any questions about anything that I've said here or any of the stuff that you uh, will read on the Brightspace page, send me an email. That's the best way to contact me. Um, otherwise, I will see you on cyberspace. Bye.